Welcome to Our Girl Relationships. We talk about the problems people face in their day-to-day -day lives. Let's start with the video. My stepmom and I always had a cordial relationship. My dad met my stepmom at his friend's place. It was his friend's cousin and they immediately hit it off. I was happy for him because after about five years of my mom passing away, he finally seemed happy and interested in a woman. So obviously, as a good son would, I encouraged him to pursue a relationship with her. I still remember his first date with her. He seemed like a 16-year-old, blushing as he spoke about how well it went. I was so happy for him and was as ready as I possibly could be to welcome her into our lives. One thing that held me back, though, was the fact that I was always hesitant to figure out if I wanted to accept her as a motherly figure or not. I mean, my mom passed away when I was at an age where I had developed an attachment to her and was aware of it. So after talking to my dad about it and going through a lot of therapy, I was as ready as I possibly could be to develop a relationship with her. That turned out to be a bummer, though, because the moment I met her, around the time my dad and she had started to discuss getting engaged, she made it pretty clear to me that she did not view me as anything special. It wasn't even through her words. Her actions of ignoring my existence, for the most part, said it all to me. And my dad, too. It created some sort of awkwardness between him and me because, as a young kid, I expected the three of us to have an amazing relationship, and honestly, that is always how my dad made it seem, always getting me excited for when she moved in and stuff like that. So, needless to say, I was a little bummed out, but not too much, though, because as time went on and I realized that as much as I didn't owe her anything, she did not owe me anything either. We started building a cordial relationship, and by the time my dad and she got married, we were pretty much settled. She would help me whenever she needed. I would appreciate her for everything she did for me, and I would be happy seeing her and my dad celebrating their love. All seems good, right? It did to me as well, till this situation took place, and now I feel like my world has turned upside down for some reason. It started off on the first day of junior high. There's this new kid that came in. Let's call him Jay. Now, Jay is the typical jock kind of guy who very obviously bullied people just so he can look funny in front of girls. And of course, who would his first target be? Me and my friends who dress very alt and goth. He started bullying me the very first day of school itself, and although I was quiet and was able to ignore much of his bullying initially, you all know how things go when once the bully realizes that he can get away with a lot. He then tries to test the waters with you and mess with all your boundaries. That is exactly what Jay did. Eventually, Jay's jokes got weirder and more detailed. He started making fun of my stepmom, making fun of her character and some other nonsense. I had enough of him, though, especially last week when he decided to steal my wallet that had my bus library and ATM card. I tried to file a complaint to my teacher about it, and it was of no avail, as usual. That day, I returned home and knew I had to talk to someone. I didn't want to worry my dad too much, so thought my stepmom, who worked from home, would be the best person to go to. The moment I entered the house, though, I was shocked because I was greeted by Jay's dad sitting on the dining table and having lunch. I know it was Jay's dad because I had seen him a couple of times before because he had come to pick up Jay from school. He greeted me as if it was nothing, and so did my stepmom. Afterwards, I just went inside my room and sort of gave everything a thought. I saw this as an opportunity to tell my stepmom everything that had happened today. So I pulled her aside and told her everything, from bullying to stealing. Upon hearing all of it, 
She had this nervous yet blank look on her face. She told me that she'd see what she can do and went back to talking to Jay's dad as if nothing had happened. A couple of days passed and Jay returned my wallet to me, although it was stripped of all the cash it had. I was okay with that, honestly. I just felt grateful towards my stepmom because I believed she had finally talked to Jay's dad about it, but nope. That was far from it all because right after school had ended, I was beaten up severely by Jay and his friends. I was left with a bloody nose. I came back home earlier than expected that day because I took a bus to get home. That day, the moment I entered the house, I could hear loud laughter from my parents' room. The house was completely empty and I could hear each and every word she said through her muffled voice. It was my stepmom saying things like, good job, he deserved it. And he's just a loser like his dad. I just immediately knew she was talking about me. My heart dropped in my stomach and then I heard the words that quite literally made me tear up. My stepmom went out of her way to tell Jay to bully me harder, all because apparently I deserved it. I quietly sneaked into my room because I didn't want my stepmom to find out that I was home and had heard all of it. I knew this matter needed to go to my dad. The very same evening, I sat my dad down and told him everything as my stepmom had left for her weekly grocery run. Needless to say, a huge argument ensued between the two until my stepmom left the house as she refused to give up on her defensiveness. The very next day, my dad visited my school with a strongly worded letter that asked my principal to take strict actions towards Jay because otherwise the cops would be involved. The principal surprisingly did end up checking the security footage of the place right outside my school where this situation took place, and with so much evidence, Jay was suspended from school, which for some reason pissed my stepmom off more than ever. Ever since then, she's been giving my dad and me both, but especially me, a hell lot of shit for ruining a child's future. My dad seems very distressed, and a lot of my relatives are blaming the situation on me because apparently I'm at fault for being too weak and not being able to take some bullying. A-I-T-A. As my dad and I stood up against Jay, a lot of parents and kids in my school have come forward to file their complaints against Jay. My stepmom is not happy with this because Jay is probably going to get into a lot of trouble. My dad's and stepmom's relationship has worsened too because of all this, because of her inability to have a calm conversation with my dad. All she ever does is scream and blame me for ruining her friendship with Jay's dad. Apparently, according to my dad, their friendship is something my stepmom values a lot because they've known each other since childhood. Their closeness is definitely suspicious, but I guess it hasn't hit my dad yet. I'm really hoping that it does eventually. If and when it does, I will keep you guys updated. It has been a couple of weeks since the back and forth between my parents. We're currently on autumn break, so Jay has been let go for now. As for my dad, I decided to finally sit him down and show him this post. He obviously was sort of killing me, and I didn't want him to find out about my stepmom from the wrong places. As soon as he read the post and the words of encouragement from you guys, he sort of broke down because apparently this has all been on his mind from the get-go. He just never confessed to me because he didn't want to distress me over it all. We both cried a lot after that and hugged each other as tightly as we possibly could. It really helped me feel like I wasn't alone after a long time. We then decide to look over my stepmom's things. She had left her spare laptop back home, and as soon as we turned it on and snooped a little, we were horrified to find out that all our suspicions were right. My stepmom was indeed having an affair with Jay's dad, and the affair dated back as long as my dad and she had been together. From the text, the fact that she was only with my dad 
for his property became very obvious. My dad was fuming at this discovery and simply just called her up and told her the truth of everything he had found. Her demeanor changed completely then, and she began apologizing to him. My dad wasn't having any of it, and the very next day itself, called up the movers to pack up her things and drop them off to Jay's dad's place. Ever since then, she's tried showing up to our place multiple times. Thankfully, though, we're currently staying at my dad's beach house to avoid her. School started back up, and I thought of updating this post. Well, the first thing we were informed of was that Jay was rusticated from our high school for misconduct. From what I've heard, there are a lot of rumors about the fact that the only reason he ever moved to this city was because he was kicked out of his previous school for the same reason. Apparently, according to his friends, he is moving once again to find a private school to complete his diploma. My ex-stepmom, too, has moved out of this city to live with her parents because Jay's dad no longer wanted anything to do with her, and there was no way she could afford to live in this city with her freelancing job. I guess karma hit her as soon as it possibly could. My dad and I both enrolled ourselves on therapy, but coping with it all has been hard, to say the least. I can see the pain in my dad's eyes as he returns from every divorce proceeding, but I also can see a brighter future for him without my stepmom, who did nothing but suck the energy out of him. I really do feel grateful for people like him and you guys for standing by me when no one else did. Thank you all. NTA, your stepmom was toxic as hell, and her bitterness and greed were to come out in one way or the other. You should be proud of yourself for helping your dad get out of a toxic situation that could have possibly left him high and dry. You're a good son, OP. NTA, I feel terribly sorry for OP and his dad who had to go through all of this over the fact that the loss of their mom, wife, they're true champs for supporting each other through it all, though, and kudos to OP's dad for standing firm behind OP's back. I, 28 female, have been married to my husband, 28 male, for five years, and we have been together since high school. We have our daughter together, Erin, 10 female, who is severely autistic. Our family situation isn't ideal and has put a strain on our relationship with both each other and our child. My husband works in the Navy and is usually gone for six to nine months at a time. This means I am left alone to look after Erin, which is extremely difficult as she is essentially nonverbal, has ARFID, etc. I love my daughter and I wouldn't change her for the world, but it can still be very stressful. And my husband does not always understand that. I don't have many friends and live far from family, so life can feel very difficult and lonely. When my cousin, 37 female, got in touch to reconnect, it felt like an answered prayer. However, I found out she was battling alcoholism and neglecting her two children, Mia, 16 female, and Corey, 6 female. I reported the incident to CPS and got emergency custody. Their father is not in the picture, and at this point, my husband was very supportive. The girls and my daughter became very close. I have never, ever seen my daughter love, trust someone as quickly as she did with Mia and Corey. Mia is a very maternal soul, and Corey, although young, is fascinated by Erin. I have never seen a child so young be so inclusive and accepting of my daughter and her needs. I truly believe these girls were sent to us. I now have full custody of them and their mother is still drinking. I may not have given birth to these girls, but they are as much my daughters as Erin. They are the first friends Erin has ever had, as other children tend to be intimidated by her and her needs. And seeing them all get along so well warms my mama's heart. My husband does not feel the same. When I originally told him that I applied for full custody, he was angry 
and told me that was not my decision to make, that it's his house too, and I shouldn't go adopting children wherever I find them, and hung up. I can understand where he's coming from, but I'm not asking him to adopt them. I'm asking him to respect the fact that they need us and that I'm not going to give them up as their parents did. When he came home for Christmas last year, he completely blanked them and pretended they didn't exist. He would also frequently say to our daughter that she was the only child he was ever going to love or need right in front of them, which was just cruel. On top of that, he barely spoke to me the whole time either. His behavior really hurt them, and they're terrified of Christmas. My husband and I rarely speak, and there's a part of me that wonders if we're better off separate, but I know the girls will think it's their fault. I feel like I'm the a-hole for bringing these girls into his life, but I would have also been an a-hole if I'd done nothing. A-I-T-A? I took in two girls from a bad home knowing full well my husband, who was away in the Navy for months at a time, didn't approve but also knew it was best for the girls. YTA, did you forget you're in a marriage? You ignored everything he said. You also brought children into a home that wasn't stable. Your husband didn't want this while you were already struggling with Erin. YTA all the way. Please stop justifying it to yourself as doing the best thing for the girls. It is not. ESH. You, most of all, for creating the situation, but your husband for being cruel to the children. You are acting like you are not part of a marriage. This is a life-changing decision, one of the biggest decisions you can make as a couple. You denied him a say in it. That makes you an a-hole. You've now made a situation where you're likely going to have to choose between these children and your husband. Can you support these children you adopted on your own? You've now brought these children to an unstable environment and exposed them to more abuse. I, 17 female, would rather live with my dad, but for school reasons, it's just a lot more convenient for everyone for me to live with my mom during the week. So mostly, I'm here to humor my dad. My mom did some stuff during their divorce that I think was shitty. So I don't really like her very much now, but I've been trying to just keep things civil until I graduate. She married a guy with two kids, 12 male, 9 female at light speed after the divorce and the whole merging families thing isn't going well. His kids hate her. I feel kind of neutral about him and just want to be left alone. And the step-siblings and I are okay, but mostly they do their own thing and I do mine. It's not the happy, blended family my mom wanted, and she keeps trying to force it and making it worse. Her husband goes along with her, so basically nobody is happy in that house. I kind of exploded the hornet's nest this last weekend because I lost my cool about something my mom has been pushing for a while about the step family. She insists on calling my stepdad my dad and the kids my siblings and gets frustrated that I won't call them that. They're not. I have a dad and I didn't grow up with the kids. I'm not going to pretend. I finally got tired of it, so when we ran into some of my mom and stepdad's friends last weekend and he introduced me as his daughter, I said, I'm not your daughter. My mom tried to laugh it off, but the friends looked uncomfortable and she got mad at me in the car and told me I need to get with the program and stop being a jerk about this. I told her that he wasn't my dad, the kids aren't my siblings, and if she doesn't get with my program, she can be not my mom the minute I turn 18. Big argument. They tried to take my car keys as punishment, and when I told my dad since the car is in his name, he called and said that they give either him or me the keys immediately, or he'll get the police involved. So my mom has been crying and says I'm an AH. Stepdad agrees. 12M said he thought it was the best, and I'm right. My grandparents came over and tried to talk to me into apologizing and going along with things. My dad says they pushed too much and got what they earned, but I probably should have just left it alone in the car. I don't think it was wrong, but I don't know if I was an AH. NTA, 
You are already making an effort to be civil with the stepdad and step siblings. You clearly have a dad that is involved in your life, and it seems like you have clearly expressed that you are not comfortable calling them dad or your siblings. They shouldn't be forcing you to call them that or introducing you that way. Your NTA. Parents can get divorced, but they need to understand that it will have an impact on their kids. They don't get to basically destroy their kid's home and then expect the kids to act like it's all perfect. No one should have to pretend just to make them feel better. NTA. Mom is being a selfish AH, as is stepdad for going along with the charade. While the wedding may have been lightning quick, I think it is safe to assume the relationship had been going on for longer. Mom is delusional here in regards to blending families, especially since all the kids are old enough to clearly see her bullshit for what it is. She may be trying to force her fantasy on the world, but reality has other ideas. OP, keep your head down as much as possible. Finish school and get the hell out of there at 18.